I'm Sadie Singh. And I'm Noah Schnapp. I'm Caleb McLaughlin. And I'm Gate Metarasso. I'm Finn Wolfhard from the show Stranger Things. Everybody is excited for season three. Us included. But in case you haven't seen seasons one and two, or you just need a quick refresher, we're here to catch you up and get you nice and ready for the new episodes. Here we go. <laughs> Super fast, here's a quick rundown of all the important characters in the series. There's Mike, Will, Dustin, and Lucas, the most awesome one, who are all best friends. Mike has a sister named Nancy, and Will has a brother named Jonathan. Nancy's dating this really cool guy named Steve Harrington and is best friends with Barb. Will's mom is Joyce Byers, and the Hawkins chief of police is Jim Hopper. Oh, and we can't forget Eleven, but we just call her Elle. Hawkins, Indiana, here we come. So season one opens in Hawkins, where we see a big scary laboratory. Something is clearly going wrong because alarms are going off and lab coat guys are panicking. But we'll get back to that, because right now our boys, Mike, Will, Lucas, and Dustin, are playing a game of Dungeons and Dragons in Mike's basement. The Demogorgon! <laughs> We're deep shit. <coughs> Nerds. So anyways, after the game, they all go their separate ways, and while biking home, Will gets attacked by this scary monster that we can't see. Spooky. Everyone starts freaking out about Will missing, but as the search goes on, we meet Elle, a girl with a shaved head and a hospital gown, who doesn't seem to speak, and has some scary men in black types after her. You must be Benny Hammond. I'm afraid I am. Who should she end up running into and making friends with? That's right, the boys. Except for Will, of course. Yeah, he was busy at the time. Uh, Will! Anyway, while Will's mom, Joyce and Hopper, are looking for Will, Nancy and Barb go to a pool party at Steve's house. And while Steve and Nancy are kissing upstairs, the Demogorgon attacks Barb. <laughs> and brings her to the Upside Down. The Upside Down is a mirror world of our own, except everything is awful and creepy and ruled over by hideous monsters of unspeakable terror. <laughs> but again, Eleven can communicate between our world and the Upside Down, so that's pretty neat. Now, at this point, Will has figured out how to communicate with his mom from the Upside Down using various Christmas lights, which he can flick on and off. This leads to Joyce covering the whole house in tons of Christmas lights and figuring out a system of interdimensional communication all her own. Which makes her look like an absolute crazy person. She's not. I don't care if anyone believes me. Also, we get some gnarly flashbacks that show us Elle was used in these terrible experiments where she's sent into the black void at the lab near Hawkins. Eventually, state troopers find what appears to be Will's body in the water of a local reservoir. As you'd imagine, everyone's pretty shocked and upset. But Hopper, bless him, is suspicious. Okay. <laughs> and discovers that the tiny child's corpse in question is just a stuffed dummy. I hate when that happens. Totally. While the school has this assembly for Will, one of the bullies tries to fight Mike, but Eleven, in disguise of course, stops him using her telepathic powers and makes him pee his pants in front of everyone. Dude, Troy peed himself! A fair but brutal punishment. Brutal indeed. So Hopper decides to break into Hawkins' lab to see what the hell is going on since they faked the child death and whatnot. Unsurprisingly, he gets caught, drugged, and returned home, where he wakes up and discovers several secret listening devices. The boys along with Elle go looking for the non-deceased Will in the woods, as do Nancy and Jonathan. Nancy gets stuck through a hole in a tree and then into the upside down, but Jonathan is able to pull her back through the goo hole before she gets barbed by the Demogorgon. Never say goo hole. Will's mom, Joyce, and Sheriff Hopper. Just Hopper? Right, Hopper and Joyce go and find Elle's birth mother and get a better idea of what's going down at Hawkins' lab, which clearly involves kidnapping newborn babies with cool powers. And the boys, out by the old quarry looking for answers, are attacked by the pee-pants bully Troy, who despite having a knife and a lot of pent-up anger, and sucks, gets his arm broken by Elle's mind. <laughs> oh, and Elle also makes Mike fly. Or maybe you should just say hover? I can say that that is awesome and very rad. The squad from Hawkins Lab knows about Elle hiding out with the boys at Mike's house. The bad men, as they are called, set out to kidnap her back. Luckily, her superpower mind is able to flip the vans over, which rules very hard. Very very hard. Now the boys and L are in hiding and it's a full-on manhunt from scary bad men in black suits. Luckily Hopper finds them first and the whole team concocts a plan to build a sensory deprivation tank which will allow L to find Will in the Upside Down. What is this for? Fun. Elle finds Will in the Upside Down using one of her classic telepathic tricks. And while the boys wait with her in the gym, Hopper and Joyce speed off to Hawkins' lab where they're convinced they'll be able to find the entrance to the Upside Down. Unsurprisingly, they're caught almost immediately. Don't move! And taken to see the head bad dude, Dr. Brenner. Hopper convinces the lab guys to let him and Joyce go into the Upside Down and find Will since the entrance is in the lab, on the condition that neither of them saw anything or admit that they were there in the first place. We're gonna find her son, and then we're gonna forget that any of this ever happened. While all of this is happening, Nancy and Jonathan, and an unwitting Steve who is being a jerk, have set up a trap for the monster, who they catch and set on fire using a bear trap and gas, as one does. 
Unfortunately, when the fire goes out, the monster is gone. Where'd it go? Guess what? Government agents working with Hawkins Lab find the kids at Hawkins Middle School. They found us. And after Elle makes their eyes start bleeding, which is very cool, the monster smells blood and is off to join everyone at the school. Demogorgon. <laughs> So the Demogorgon is just busting up stuff, weaving a real mess of bodies and school supplies as the kids run around trying to stop it. In the final showdown, Lucas clumsily tries to find more rocks to slingshot at the monster. Get the rocks! Get the rocks! Get the rocks! Get in the rocks! Elle shows up, using all the power she has, annihilates the hell out of the Demogorgon, and it dies. It's a horrible monster, and it definitely ate Barb alive, so it's fine. Sadly, though, Elle disappears at this point, too, and nobody knows where she went. But Joyce and Hopper find and rescue Will from the Upside Down, so that's good. Smash cut to a few months later, everything seems back to normal. Will is Harold, the boy who came back, but still seems to be slightly affected by his ordeal. Where am I? He also burps up a black slug, which is probably not great. But on a more positive note, we see a final scene where Hopper treks off into the woods and leaves a stash of Eggo waffles, Elle's absolute favorite food, in a drop box, leaving us on a hopeful note we might see her again. And Finn. We forgot to talk about the part where Jonathan beats the crap out of Steve. Thank you, Jack, man. No, stop it. But other than that, that does it for <laughs> season one, but what about season two? We've still got all the boys. We've got Will, Mike, Lucas, and Dustin, and Nancy, Steve, Jonathan, Hopper, Joyce, and of course, Eleven. No more Barb, though, due to being eaten. Yikes. And we also meet some new characters, but we'll get to them in a bit. We open on Dark Pittsburgh, where a group of masked individuals are fleeing the police and eventually are able to escape because one of the people in the group has special abilities to project images in the police's minds. In this case, a tunnel collapsing and blocking the cops' way. <laughs> We see her nose bleeding just like Eleven's does, so that's probably connected. The scene changes back to good old Hawkins, Indiana, where the boys are at the local arcade trying to figure out who the new high scores in the machines belong to, a mysterious character named Mad Max. Cool name. Who's Mad Max? Better than you. We also find out that even though Will is back from the Upside Down, he's not all the way back. He walks outside the arcade and is struck with the dark vision of the horrifying shadow monster looming over the entire town. <laughs> Are you okay? It's no big deal. Back at school, Nancy and Steve are still going steady, and we meet two new transfer students in from California. The devilishly handsome Billy and his stepsister, a young skater named Max. Like Mad Max, maybe? Oh, and mm. Joyce is now dating the manager of the local radio shack. Our old friend Hopper is called out to the local farm where he discovers all pumpkins are rotted all the way through. Will is seeing a doctor from Hawkins' lab, Dr. Owens, who is helping him deal with his PTSD. But we all know it's something more than that. Time for some good news. It turns out Elle is alive and well and living with Hopper up in a remote cabin in the woods. He's living in the woods and getting extreme cabin fever and also occasionally visiting Mike through her little void space because government bad guys are really looking hard for her, even a year after her disappearance. While the boys are trying their hardest to make friends with Max, Hopper heads into the woods to explore more of the weird goose stuff that is killing all the pumpkins and discovers that the problem is seemingly emanating from, yup, Hawkins Lab. Oh, and Nancy and Steve have a huge fight at a Halloween party and by the end of the night it seems like she's actually warming up more to Will's older brother, Jonathan. Jonathan. While the boys are out trick-or-treating, Will has another terrifying run-in with the mysterious shadow monster, this time in full view. Gotta tell you, it's pretty scary. <laughs> Meanwhile, Elle, who wasn't allowed to trick or treat because it might expose her, does her own void black space trick to go see Mike, who she misses a lot. Mike. After their Halloween night out, Dustin returns home to find some weird tiny salamander looking creature rummaging in his trash and adopts it. What are you, little guy? And names it the natural choice D'Artagnan, or Dart for short. After the previous night's fight, it really looks like Steve and Nancy are donezo. History, kaput, no more stancy. Womp womp. Elle, fully sick of being cooped up in the cabin, sets out on her own to find Mike and the rest of her friends at school. Where is school? Where coincidentally, Dustin has managed to lose Dart, and we're still not in entirely sure where Dart is. While the boys look for Dart, Elle sees Mike with Max and runs away in tears. And Will has yet another horrifying run-in with the Shadow Monster, who swiftly inhabits his body. Again, probably not a great thing. There's a weird rivalry going on between Steve and Billy, too. Cool guy drama, I guess. Maybe you should just shut up and play the game. While Joyce and Hopper try to make sense of these new drawings that Will keeps making of the shadow monster in the upside down world tunnels, Nancy and Jonathan are scooped up by the government agents for asking too many Snoopy teenage questions. Let us out of here! 
here. But eventually, Dr. Owens decides to show them the portal to the Upside Down in an attempt to get them to shut the hell up. We understand each other now, don't we? Dustin has been keeping Dart a secret from his friends since he recaptured him, which I'm sure he had a perfectly good reason for, right? But surprise, surprise. It turns out that he's a baby Demogorgon and he ate Dustin's family cat. Whoops. And Hopper, who seems to have figured out Will's cryptic maps, starts digging in one of the desiccated pumpkin patches and discovers an entrance to the monster's tunnels. And of course, because he's Hopper, he jumps on it. He's a brave one, all right, but he's also stupid because he almost immediately gets knocked out by monster gas, I guess? <laughs> Then the tunnel, which seems to be a part of the monster, starts enveloping him. Wait, no, no, no. But more on that later. Meanwhile, Elle, who discovered Hopper's research on her origin, heads off to find her birth mother, who we find almost completely catatonic in a rocking chair, unable to communicate. Sunflower. Rainbow. That's a bummer. Oh, and Nancy and Jonathan enlist the help of a wacky private investigator, Murray Bauman, and end up hooking up at his weird garage. With help from Bob, who has a real knack for puzzling, Joyce is able to find Hopper and is quickly joined by scary dudes in E.T. looking suits from Hawkins' lab, who begin to burn the tunnel because apparently the monster absolutely hates warm stuff. One unfortunate side effect, however, Will is clearly being inhabited by the monster, as this tunnel burning causes him to convulse in pain, too. And honestly, he's been acting super weird for a while now. <laughs> Dustin enlists our old friend Steve to help him capture the now husky-sized Dart, who is trapped in the cellar of his house. You ate my cat. But Dart is super strong and busted out. Uh-oh. With Will, Joyce, Hopper, and Bob in the hospital recovering, Dustin and Steve set out in the woods to search for Dart, and with the help of their friends, erect a kind of Demogorgon fortress in the woods. Things do not go as planned. This is Stranger Things. What do you expect? But we do find out that Steve is kind of a great babysitter, in ways that only a Hawkins babysitter would need to be. What the- <laughs> I still can't believe Max's family moved into this bonkers town. Oh, come on, you love it. While all this is happening, Will, now operating as a kind of spy for the monster, which in true D&D style is called the Mind Flayer, summons armies of demodogs to the hospital with great ominousness, I might add. He made me do it. We take a break from the storyline to rejoin Elle, who discovered from her mother that there are other kids like her, and sets off to find them on another bus. She ends up in the big city and eventually finds her sister, who is the girl from season two, episode one, with the gang of masked folks. The gang of misfits encourages Elle to work on developing her powers and eventually enlist her help in their mission. Shirley Temple's gonna get us all killed. Which is to kill everyone involved with Elle and her sister's torture as young children. A vendetta, if you will. Don't cross badass girls, I guess. But Elle isn't really big on the murder thing and eventually sensing trouble back in Hawkins, parts ways with the crew and heads back home again on a Greyhound bus. Back to the hospital where dozens of Demogorgons have broken out and are ripping apart scientists and soldiers all over the place it's just a full-on bloodbath. Oh yeah, bad news all around. Hopper, Joyce, Bob, Mike, and Dr. Owens are running around trying to avoid the monsters, but also have to put Will to sleep because he's a straight-up shadow monster capo at this point. He's lying! He's lying! He's lying! Just when it seems like everyone's screwed, 80s technology genius Bob sneaks past the monster horde to the security room where he successfully opens up a path to escape for the rest of the crew. Way to go, Bob! Tragically, Bob suffers a hero's fate and gets gruesomely disemboweled by a group of demo dogs. <laughs> You're with Barb now, Bob. <laughs> the surviving gang escape back to the buyer's house, but are eventually set upon by more demodogs. That's not good. They just can't catch a break. But just as they prepare to go down fighting, a limp demodog corpse flies through the window. <laughs> heralding the return of, you guessed it, Eleven. As Hopper leaves with Elle, Steve is charged with babysitting the kids, which he is, again, very good at. Does everybody understand that? Babysitter Steve. Mom Steve. Alas, an irate Billy comes by looking for Max, and he and Steve end up in an epic fight. <laughs> One that is actually ended by Max, who threatens to nail that Billy. Guess that's why they call her Mad Max, huh? Joyce, Jonathan, and Nancy try to exercise the shadow monster from Will before it completely consumes him, using the only weapon they know hurts him, heat. Meanwhile, Steve and the kids head down to the tunnels to try and burn up the monster with some gasoline. Hard to imagine they'll be able to do what a bunch of soldiers with flamethrowers couldn't, but you've got to admire their pluck. And of course, no monster could be fully defeated without Elle, who alongside Hopper descends into Hawkins Lab's gate. And as Hopper fires off a machine gun at the Demodogs, swarming all around them, Elle uses her powers to fully close the gate beneath Hawkins Lab. <laughs> 
Bye-bye, Mr. Mind Flayer. Way to go, Al. Cut to a month later, where the government finally was forced to admit their role in the death of Barb and Bob, and Hawkins' lab is shut down for good. And as a nice little wrap-up for our heroes, all the kids end up at the school's snowball, where Dustin has a, let's say, new hairdo. Elle shows up looking very dolled up to dance with Mike, and oh, they finally kiss. And oh, Lucas and Max are a couple now. Pretty damn cute, if you ask me. Unfortunately, in true Hawkins form, the final shot warns that stuff is about to get extremely real for the kids in season three. Anywho, now that you're all caught up, you're ready to dive into season three. That's good. Oh. Check it out on Netflix.